Hi there, my name is Fraser Noble and I'm a lecturer at Massey University's School of Engineering and Advanced Technology here in Auckland, New Zealand. In this video, I want to show you how to get started with Google's TensorFlow machine learning framework and write a simple TensorFlow based program. First, we're going to look at getting the tools necessary to do so, and then second, we'll look at writing the program. So let's get started. Now the first thing we need to do is get the tools that we need. Now I use Windows to uh, do my development and I use Anaconda to manage my Python uh, environments. So let's get Anaconda. Now open up your browser and search for Anaconda and hopefully the first thing that comes up is download Anaconda now. So if we click on that, scroll down and we see we can download Anaconda 4.3.1 for Windows. Now I use a 64-bit machine so I'm going to download the 64-bit uh, installer. Now the installer is 422 megabytes, which could take some time to download. Now fortunately, I've already downloaded and installed uh, Anaconda. So if I type start and type in the word Anaconda, there we see that I have the Anaconda prompt and the Anacan, uh, Anaconda navigator. Uh, in this video, we're going to focus on using the Anaconda prompt. Though, if you would like to use the uh, graphical user interface, uh, I'd suggest you have a look at Anaconda Navigator. Now, the next tool that we need to download and install is Microsoft's Visual Studio Code. So, if we just open up our browser and search for Visual Studio Code, you'll see that probably the first thing that comes up is uh, the link we're after. Now, if I click Download for Windows, that'll download uh, code now I've already downloaded and installed uh, Visual Studio Code, so if I type in start, code, there it is. Now that I've downloaded the tools necessary, I need to create an environment for me to install TensorFlow into. So let's look at doing that now. So if I go to start and I type in cmd, I can create a uh, command prompt, but I'll just right click, run it as administrator, and there we go. Now to create the environment, I just need to type in conda create-n for name, and then the name of the environment. Now I'm going to install TensorFlow uh, for CPUs, so I'm going to type in name TensorFlow-CPU. Uh, before we push enter, we just need to also define the version of Python. So if we type in the word Python equal to 3.5, then we push enter. So that'll create a um, Python 3.5 environment named TensorFlow-CPU. Uh, so we'll just push Y to continue. And the next thing we need to do is then install uh, packages into the environment. So activate TensorFlow-CPU, and that'll activate the environment. And then I just need to install the packages. So we're going to install Conda, install uh, Jupyter, yeah, mat, plot, lib, and scipy. And so it'll download and install these packages. It might take a few minutes, uh, and then we'll push Y to proceed. And now our environment will have all of these different packages installed. The next thing we need to do is uh, download and install TensorFlow. So to do that, we just type in pip install TensorFlow and push enter. Now this will install TensorFlow for CPUs onto our uh, TensorFlow-CPU environment. Now as an aside, let's say you wanted to run TensorFlow on your graphical processor uh, or GPU. Well you would need to do pip install TensorFlow-GPU. But you'd also need to install uh, CUDA from NVIDIA and NVIDIA's CUDNN uh, tool. And that's, I think, CUDA for uh, Deep Neural Networks. I'll show you how to do that in a uh, separate video. Now, it shouldn't take much longer for us uh, to uh, install TensorFlow. But once we're finished, we'll next run code and uh, show you how to set up code so that we can start typing our program. The first thing that we'll do in code is install our um, Python extension, which will allow for us to type Python programs in Visual Studio Code. So TensorFlow is finished, let's type in code, and it'll bring up the um, IDE. Now, 
I've already done some development for code, so I've already installed the extension for Python. But to do so, just click here on extensions, and you can search. And if you type into search extensions in Marketplace, the word Python, push enter, you'll see that there's a Python tool uh, written by Don uh, Giamani. Um, that's the one I've downloaded and installed. Once you've got the uh, Python uh, extension installed, you can start to write your Python programs. Now, we need to browse to a directory where we want our um, file to be saved. So we're just going to open a folder, and we'll just put it into Documents, and I'm going to select Folder. And you'll see that uh, all the folder uh, contents are here displayed in the Explorer window. Now I'm going to create a new file, so just click on the new file icon, and I'm going to call it uh, test.py. Now uh, I'm going to then start to type in my program. So the first thing I'm going to do is just give the file a string, just saying uh, what it is the file does, kind of like a um, boilerplate. So it's a uh, test program for TensorFlow. The next thing I want to do is import TensorFlow. Now, if IntelliSense starts to uh, uh, finish the word TensorFlow, then you know that you've got TensorFlow installed in your environment correctly. So I'm just going to finish that off with install TensorFlow as TF. So I can use TF as a shortcut to access all of the uh, modules of TensorFlow. Push into. Now that I've got TensorFlow ready to be used, I've got to think about what I want to actually use it for. Now, to get started, uh, we're just going to add two numbers together. Now, each of the numbers we could either define as constants or variables, but here I'm going to define them as placeholders. Placeholders are kind of like variables, but they don't actually have anything defined uh, prior to the graph being evaluated. So let's have a um, two numbers we're going to add together, A and B. A is equal to tf.placeholder. And it's got a type, and let's say we're going to have um, two floating points of size none, and it's going to be named A and and uh, we've got a second placeholder which we're going to call B, and it's also going to be a float, and we're going to name it B. Now our graph is defined by making use of these two placeholders and we want to add them together. So we can just write C equal to A plus B. Now that'll define our graph, but it's not much good to us until we actually evaluate it. So we can do that by creating a session. So with TF dot session as S, we've created a session named S, which then we can uh, use to evaluate uh, our graph of C being equal to A plus B. So let's write out our answer being equal to s dot run and then c and because we're using placeholders we now need to provide uh, at the evaluation of the graph the um, values for a and b so we open up our curly brace and we go a colon and then we type in a value so let's say we add 1 plus 2 we should expect the answer is 3 b colon 2.0 now, in order for us to display the answer on the console, we can just use the print command and tell it to print the answer. So we save everything. And um, just before we run things, I'd like to point out something. Now, the uh, Python extension makes use of PyLint to check our source code, but sometimes it throws exceptions or warnings. So if we look at import TensorFlow, we should see that we've got a um, warning that uh, we weren't uh, able to import TensorFlow, but I know this isn't right, so what we can do is actually suppress that warning. To do that, we can just type in hash pylint colon disable equal to e0401, which I think is the, if we mouse over then the red line, we see the pop up and we see e0401, so that's cool. So if we now save it, we should see that red line's been suppressed. 
Now the second one down here is complaining about the variable being named uh, answer. We can suppress that. So we just need to type in C0103. So let's try that. Slash pi lint disable equal to C0103. Save. Cool. So now we see that warning's been suppressed. So now that we've got our program ready to go and it looks pretty and everything's happy, we can um, run it from the uh, built-in terminal of Visual Studio Code. So to get the terminal, just go to View, Integrated Terminal, and there it is. So, uh, fingers crossed, if I type in the word Python and then test.py and push enter, we should get some instructions coming up just saying, look, TensorFlow is installed, and then the answer, 3.0. So we know that 1 plus 2 is 3. Now let's just change some of these numbers to see if they change. So let's make it A equal to 2.5, save it, and we're going to rerun our script. And so we should expect that we get 4.5 as the answer, and there it is. So now we've got a TensorFlow uh, environment all set up and working, and we've written a simple program using our Visual Studio Code and the TensorFlow machine learning framework. So it all works. Um, hopefully that video has been uh, helpful for you. If it has, why not subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is Fraser Noble. And uh, I'll be regularly updating this um, uh, channel with more videos on TensorFlow and uh, also some of my work that I'm doing with OpenCV. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.